Okay, if you live in these countries that are shaded in blue or orange, you know how it is. Spring forward, fall back. Every March, every November or October, just like clockwork. But if you're in the gray area, you know, where most of the world is, you don't have to experience this crap. Also, like clockwork, every time we do a time shift, people complain, while others welcome it. People have the reasons why it should be implemented, but it does screw up a lot of things like travel schedules, sleep cycles, and there's a lot of compelling arguments that daylight savings time does more harm than good when it comes to energy use, health, and even economy-wise. So why do we do it? Well, there are a couple reasons. The spring forward makes the sun rise and set an hour later. Historically, it was implemented during the World Wars and the 1970s energy crisis in an attempt to conserve energy, such as coal and oil during wartime. With more daylight hours in the evening, you supposedly reduce the amount of fuel needed for electricity and stuff like that. Now, it's so people who come home from work or school in the afternoon during the spring and summer months have a little more daylight hours for leisure time versus it getting dark after hours. Because psychologically, nightfall is when your body wants to settle down and go to sleep. A lot of people love the extra hours of light when they're on the road or outside doing an activity, since under springtime daylight savings time, especially here in LA, it doesn't get dark until after 8 or 9 p.m. One reason why they push to extend the period of daylight savings time to November here in the USA was so that kids had more daylight hours to go trick-or-treating during on Halloween. So in that sense, I get why people do it. And I get why people like it, but I'm sorry, I still hate it. I personally prefer standard time because I like it getting dark at 6 to 7, not 8 or 9. As an astronomer who operates a public telescope, I call this period dark sky robbing time because the later sunsets mean I have little time to work with for a dark sky during the spring and summer months. Since operating hours are from 7 to 9.30 p.m., during daylight savings months, it doesn't get dark until after 8 or 9. And then, oh, it's 9.30, I gotta close this telescope. Sorry, guys, try again. Well, then why don't you just do the closing time later? Because it is a park-owned telescope, and the city closes all parks at 10 p.m., and doesn't want the parks open that late. If it was up to me, I'd have my scope open all night. And because of that, it's hard to get people interested, let alone wanting to bring their children to your star parties out in the desert when it doesn't get dark until after their bedtime. And it's not like celestial events always happen at convenient times. Uh, sorry, you just cannot reschedule an eclipse because it's not on the weekend. And this is somebody who lives around LA. Imagine if I was up north during the summer when it doesn't get dark until after 10. But again, I know I'm in a minority, so it is what it is. I personally don't think daylight savings time saves energy as much as people think it does. Not only that, Europe doesn't do the time switch on the same dates. So there's a period where the U.S. is in daylight savings time, but Europe still isn't. So man, can that mess up the international flight schedule. Arizona and Hawaii don't observe daylight savings time. It's because from Hawaii, your hours of daylight don't really vary that much. So there's no point in using it. Arizona decided to stick with standard time because it became apparent that an extra hour of sunlight over Tucson and Phoenix, where it gets hotter than hell in the summer, resulted in more energy usage from AC units constantly being on full blast. The Navajo Reservation still observes it for some reason, but then if you drive into the Hopi Reservation, which the Navajo surrounds, they don't observe daylight savings time. So that's where things can get messed up a little bit. But still, because the Pacific states still spring forward, that means California, Nevada, Oregon, and Washington, and even parts of Idaho have the same time as Arizona eight months out of the year. Recently, California voters voted yes on Prop 7 to make daylight savings time permanent in California should the federal government sign off on it. And of course, the vote could not have happened at a worse time, considering this was done around the 2018 midterms, just after a time change, while people were still bitching about it. 
Of course people voted yes because they're a bunch of whiny babies about it. You think that this is going to solve the problem? Trust me, it will not. If the federal government signs off on something like this, with some states adopting permanent daylight savings time, but others choosing not to, this will turn the time zones in the United States one big pile of dung. If California adopts a permanent daylight savings time while the other Pacific states don't, then essentially you're putting California into mountain time when those states fall back. And of course, should Arizona keep doing what they're doing, then California and Arizona will be the same time throughout the year. But then during winter months, you'll have mountain time states like Colorado, Utah, Montana, Wyoming, even parts of the Dakotas and Nebraska will be the same time as California, while Oregon, Nevada, and Washington won't be. Oh, and don't forget that during the winter months, during daylight savings time, the sun won't come up until 8 a.m. How would you like to have your morning commute or children's trips to the school done in the dark? And since the sun will still go down around 6, regardless if we have daylight savings time in the winter, you still will not have that much daylight leisure time after hours. So you just wasted all of your daylight hours by implementing permanent daylight savings time. You're also forgetting that we've tried this before. It didn't work. The energy crisis in the 1970s caused Nixon to implement a permanent daylight savings time in January of 1974, and it was meant to last for two years. However, it ended prematurely that October when parents decided they didn't want their kids waiting for the bus on the dark. I find it very funny that when you looked up Prop 7, it didn't mention that at all. Then you wonder why I hate politics. It's not just California. Florida has also approved a Sunshine Protection Act to also implement permanent daylight savings time should the federal government allow it. So all that has to happen is congressional approval. I really hope a scenario like this doesn't happen. The only way I will be fine with it is if it's a nationwide thing. If people don't like the time changes so much, you know you can always vote to nix daylight savings time and keep it in standard. You know, the way the time zones were meant to be designed. But again, people like their leisure activities with the sun still up, so I just don't see that happening, especially in California. The thing is, California doesn't need daylight savings time. Places that may need daylight savings time are the more northerly states where the differences in daylight hours throughout the year vary a lot more. Down in the southern states, like Southern California, Florida, Texas, and especially Hawaii, if we stayed in standard during the spring and summer months, it would still not get dark until the 7 to 8. So most people would still be naturally waking up and going to bed with the sun, which is how our bodies are supposed to operate. Now, it doesn't mean it's perfect, because on this planet... The further away you live from the equator, the more differences in daylight throughout the year you have. Hell, if you live in places like St. Petersburg, Russia, or Anchorage, Alaska, you're dealing with white nights in June, where it never gets dark, and December is where both of your commutes are in the dark. And don't get me started on places that have the midnight sun in the summer. In fact, one can argue that you're better off if you inverted daylight savings time. As in, you spring back and fall forward. During the summer, you already have plenty of daylight hours. So shifting them an hour later is almost pointless. And it's hard to put your kids to bed during the summer at 8 to 9 p.m. when it's still light outside. Places like London, if it was still standard time in the summer and not daylight, it would still get dark at 8 to 9. But in the winter time, if you switched in the daylight savings... Then instead of getting dark around 5 to 6, it gets dark around 7. Wouldn't you want to shift your daylight hours to an hour later in the winter when you're limited on your daylight hours? Why haven't people thought of that? Oh, wait. It's because you still have time changes, right? Or maybe you just don't want your morning routines in the dark. Well, like I said, unless you live near the equator, it's one or the other. You wake up with sunrise or you go to bed with sunset. So pick your freaking poison. Or maybe I have just helped illustrate on how pointless daylight savings time actually is. You agree with me, you disagree with me, I would love to see your comments. You like what I have to say, make sure that subscription bell is clicked. 
and be there the next time I post another video.